Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1406. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got to talk about calculating a moving average with average ifs and end of month function. Now, here's our data set. It starts in January 2016, control down arrow, and we have transactional records all the way to December 2018. Control Home. And over here, we want a list of each month and then a 12-month moving average. Now, all that means is that if I have the end of the month and I'm going to type 12-31-2016, a moving average with this end of the month would look at all the dates in December all the way back to January 1st. From this data set, that means we need the sales from January 1st all the way to December 31st. And then we calculate the average. But as I copy this down, it needs to successively move only looking at the last 12 months. Now I want to copy this end of the month date down. So watch this. This is a great trick. Right there in the corner, that little green box is the fill handle. That's the selection cursor, that big fat white cursor. And when I hover over it, the crosshair or angry rabbit, I can simply click and drag down. And there, that little smart tag, if you hover over it and click on the arrow, look at that. For dates, there's a bunch of options, including the one we want, fill months. Now, someone actually asked this question in the comments a couple days ago. What's the keyboard? Once you copy this down to open up the smart tag, I never use it because it's a kind of long one. Shift Alt F10 is the keyboard to open it up. And then you can arrow down. So I'm going to arrow down to months and then enter. So there we have our end of the months, including, look at that, February 28th. Now in our formula here, we're going to use average ifs. And we're going to have two conditions. Remember, we need all the sales that are less than or equal to December 31st, 2016, and greater than exactly one year back, which is 1-1-2016. Now I'm actually going to show you the end of the months off to the side, and then we'll copy it and use it inside of our average ifs. All right, you ready? Equals end of the month. Why would we use the end of the month function to get the 1st of January? Well, let's see how to do this. I'm going to say the start date, December 31st, 2016, comma, and months. If I give it a positive number, it will give me the end of the month in the future. Zero would give me the same exact date, because zero means end of the month for the current month. And minus goes backwards, and that's what we want, minus 12. Now, if I close parentheses and Control-Enter, that's the serial number. Control-1 to open up Format Cells, Date. That button is highlighted, so I can simply hit Enter. Well, wait a second. That's December 31st, 2015. F2 to put it in edit mode. We have to add one more day to get to January 1st. Control-Enter. Now I'm going to F2 and copy this. Control-C. That is our lower limit. Now let's come over here. Equals average ifs. This function was new in Excel 2007. If I hit Tab, there is our screen tip. Now, average range, that's where we put the numbers that we want to average. Now, this is an Excel table. I've already converted it to an Excel table with Control-T, and then I named it. And it's very convenient, because if we click at the top, there's the column header or field name. When you see that downward pointing black arrow, when you click, it automatically highlights the whole column. And it uses proper table formula nomenclature, table name, and then the column name or field name in square brackets, comma. Criteria range, I'm going to click on the top with my black downward pointing arrow. Boom, there is order date. Table name, field name, and square brackets, comma. Now, the first criteria is going to be greater than or equal to the lower limit. So in double quotes, greater than symbol, first character, equal sign, second character, and then close double quotes. Anytime you use comparative operators, we need them in double quotes and count ifs, sum ifs, and averages. And then we're going to join it. 
to our lower limit. So I use ampersand Shift 7, Control V. Now, just like in our last video, we're not going to have to put parentheses around that plus to get it to calculate correctly, because the order of precedence for Excel to calculate formulas always calculates math operators before join operators, and comparative operators for that matter. So there is our lower limit. Click comma. Criteria range, I'm simply going to use my black arrow. Boom, that is so awesome and convenient. Comma, and now we go in double quotes less than or equal to in double quotes, join it to the upper limit. Close parentheses. And there we go. That formula right there will calculate a moving average all the way down, always picking out the sales numbers that are 12 months back. Control Enter. Double click and send it down. I'm going to the last cell, F2, and look at that. All of the cell references are pointing to the right place. Now we have one last thing we'd like to do here since this is a report. I'm going to highlight all the end of the months, Control-1 to open up Format Cells, and let's do a little custom number formatting. Now, custom number formatting for dates is easy. M is month, D is day, and Y is year. So I'm going to highlight the type box. Notice the sample right there. When I type a M, that gives me the actual number. Two M's would give me a lead zero for like month one. And look at this, three M's gives me three letter abbreviation, and four gives me the full December. I'm going to backspace and only use three characters, space, dash space, and then watch the year. Y, Y, that gives me two. And three always gives us the full year. And that's our custom number formatting. Click OK. And there is our report. Custom number formatting showing month and year. And there is our average ifs and end of month function. All right, that was a little fun with moving average. We'll see you next video.